I look at that and it's all blank. And yours is filled, so it's intimidating, sort of, you know? Yeah, so here's the first thing you should do when you open up Game Maker Studio. You should create a blank project. It's going to be completely empty, right? And there's nothing in it, right? It'll just be blank space like this. Go and look on Google and say, how do I make a character move in Game Maker Studio? Tech YouTubers always say that if you want to learn a new technology, you should start a new project as a way to escape tutorial hell. But is that true? The answer is yes. But how do you go about doing that? What resources do you use? Why is it even good in the first place? I want to show you what it's like for me when I try to learn a new framework or library. My main objective is to show you that an experienced developer will also experience many of the same things that a newbie would. The difference is how we handle it. I wanted to start a brand new project so I could learn to use Godot. There's been a lot of talk about this game engine, so I thought this would be a good time to check it out. The first thing I decided to do, which I also recommend that you do, was to run to the Godot documentation. I worked through about half of the getting started section before I got bored and thought I'd just dive right into trying to make my own game. For your first project, you should pick something really simple. So that's exactly what I did. I remember that when I was a kid, my dad had a game on his Red Hat Linux laptop. It was called Sokoban. I absolutely loved that game and thought it was perfect due to its simplicity. It's a puzzle game where the only mechanic is that you have to be able to push a box into a specific square to solve it. The catch is that you can't pull it, which leads to some interesting difficulty. Instead of the usual setup though, which is like a prisoner and some diamonds or a man in a box, I decided to use a dung beetle as a character and dung as the box. As I started a new project in Godot, my mind went blank. I'm sure you guys can relate to this though. You know the feeling, right? You start to get anxious because you don't even know where to start. Funnily enough, programming is just like a video game. Imagine you've never played a game and you decide to start with something like Civilization 6. You're not gonna know what to do and you're gonna feel lost. So ask yourself, what do you usually do in that situation? You run to Google, and you start looking up a bunch of guides on how to get started on civilization. Now imagine you've played Counter-Strike before, but you've never played Call of Duty. Well then I'm almost certain that if you try to play Call of Duty, you'll get good at it really quickly. Why? Well, because the games have similarities and many transferable skills. As I've said in previous videos, if you feel stuck, the first step is always to try to break your task down into smaller steps. Pirate Software also gave us a small clue when he said, just try to get your character to move. So that's exactly what I try to do. In the getting started section, they literally teach you how to get the character to move. Now you might be thinking, but little turtle, aren't you just copying and pasting right now? Isn't that bad? You're right, I am copying and pasting, but think about it. How did you learn to speak when you were just a toddler? You learned by imitating your parents, but when did it stop being just imitation and people around you said that you could speak? Well. It was when you started using the words you learned to express what you wanted to say. It's the same thing with programming or learning a new framework. Learning anything really. At first you have to copy and imitate. Only once you use it for your own purposes by combining concepts to form something new can you say that you've understood it. So I copy the code and follow the steps and I got my character moving. But that's where I hit a small problem where copying and pasting just wasn't enough. My character moves smoothly because that's how the guide teaches you to learn to move. I, on the other hand, want my character to have a sort of tile-based movement where it's locked to a certain number of pixels. So then I used what I learned in the getting started tutorial and applied a little bit of my own knowledge to achieve the result I wanted. Up next, I thought let me go ahead and create the dung for my dung beetle to push around. If any of you have ever worked with a Godot, you might know that it uses a node-based system, which means that you have to adjust the way you organize your objects a little bit. I'd really recommend giving this video a watch. It's about composition versus inheritance as an approach for game development. The down low is that composition is essentially breaking up something like a character into different individual components that can be reused. For example, you might have some logic to make your character walk which you could put into its own walk component node. That component can then just be added to another character that you might want to have the same functionality. The way I thought about it as a full stack developer is kind of like when you use components in a front end framework like React. You usually tend to split everything up into reusable components like tables and input boxes instead of using inheritance. Anyway, 
Since you have all of these reusable components, how do you now get them to talk to each other? This is where I hit my first real blocker, but this is also where I want you to use 110% of your brain to listen to the framework I'm about to outline for you, because this is where you're gonna learn to unblock yourself from any problem you might encounter. The first step is to do a Google search, something like, how do I get nodes to talk to each other? You're gonna get a ton of results, some of them relevant, some of them not so relevant. In this case, I came across a feature of Godot called signals. They seemed to be what I was looking for, based on the explanations. This wasn't enough to thoroughly understand them though. If you're in a similar situation, then the next step should be to check out the documentation. I did exactly that, and while I understood the concept, I wasn't sure how to apply it to my scenario. The getting started section, which I was following, only showed me how to connect signals by dragging and dropping them manually. In my case, I wanted to do it using code. So what should you do in this situation? You should look for other places where you can see examples of the concepts being applied. For example, other people's code on GitHub. In my case though, I found a YouTube video of someone doing it programmatically, which helped me understand how it worked. Then, I was able to adapt it to my project. Lastly, if you still couldn't find an acceptable answer, you should ask for help in a forum. I recommend watching this YouTube short that I'm gonna link down below about the XY problem and how you should format your questions when you ask for help. Why is this approach better than watching a whole YouTube course on how to make a game? Well, this example might sound a little bit extreme, but hear me out. I want you to think of a traumatic and difficult experience that you've had in the past. Can you remember it? I bet you can visualize it very clearly. Well, if you work on your own personal project, you will come across many difficulties. And I guarantee that you'll remember how to solve them, but especially the ones that you spend a lot of time on and you find the most difficult. On the other hand, if you watch a whole YouTube course on how to make games, you may not get to experience all of those difficulties, or they simply won't be as hard and you won't remember them as well. If you found any value in this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I know it's been a while since the last video, but I've been pretty busy applying for my British citizenship, and it's just an expensive and daunting process. Anyway, I have another video lined up very soon, so stay tuned. Would you say that you're stuck in tutorial hell? Have you actually tried building your own project? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about your experience. And as you can probably tell from my previous videos, I reply to almost all of the comments.